Okay, where are we? Let's see if we get this stream up and running. Facebook too, eh? We'll just see how we get this. Hi, it's David at Fixer Frame at Mount Cravat, and we are just uh, today we're having a quick look at repurposing an old picture frame. Now, this isn't a really uh, old, old frame, but what's happened is uh, someone's brought in this uh, gold frame, old wedding photo, and they've also brought in a couple of uh, photos that they want to put into it. And we get asked this often can we reuse this frame? to put some new photos in. So I just thought I'd stream this live while we're taking this frame apart and we can have a look how we make those uh, pictures fit into the frame. So I'm gonna turn the camera around just onto the, uh, the bench top and I'll try and take you through it. We'll see how we go. If we lose any stream, I will try and get it back live. So we're streaming from Fix the Frame at Mount Cravat and uh, if you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments and I'll try to keep an eye on the chat uh, throughout it. We're streaming both to Facebook and YouTube, so don't worry, wherever you're seeing this, uh, I'll get a chance to have a look at those comments as we move through. So just enjoy the broadcast. If you've got any questions, ask in the chat. Okay, so let's just see if we can put this down a little bit on this table. Cool. So anyway, first up, I'm gonna take out this old frame that's come in. We've got some uh, little stainless steel uh, wire and uh, double D rings on this one. So we're going to keep these uh, these rings; they can be reused. Now, this this frame itself was sealed up uh, with uh, gum tape, by the look of it. So this is a water activated one. We're not going to peel it off. We're just going to cut along, uh, along the edge. We'll take the little bump ons off. Won't really matter. And here we just get in. Now underneath here, there's going to be some little staples. I can see them where they're, where they're actually hanging out. I can see the little dent. So I'm just using a flathead screwdriver to get into where these staples are. I can peel, peel this back to have a look. I can see a little staple. Now, if it doesn't come out all the way, you can always grab a, um, this is just a wire cutter, but any little uh, pair of pliers, something like that to get hold of the, the staple. I tend to use one of these flat, flat blade screwdriver pro crown you can always use one of the uh like we got a little pointy um awl to get into those staples sometimes people use nails in a lot of old frames they're nails you really just need to get in and get out all the fittings before you try to take anything out of the frame you don't want the old staples there to uh, dig in and break the glass or anything in this example, the glazing that they have, I think it's an old anti-reflective. Oh no, it's just a clear. So they got clear glass on this. Sometimes people um, like to keep, you know, that this this frame was expensive in the day. It, it looks like it was, and uh, they obviously now want to repurpose it and make use of this old picture frame to frame some new family photos rather than have the expense of making a new frame or um, they, they may have other frames that match this style so it's a simple way to keep keep using that frame and uh, not waste uh, you know it's a good it's a good thing to recycle frames so anyway, what I've done I've taken all that all the way off where I'd cut it. Now this whole picture is going to come out in one piece actually so that's already that was uh, matted up it's got a fillet and a little mat board and other other bits and pieces in there but we're just going to keep that together because we can give that back to the customer as it is rather than try to reuse this mat even though the uh, 
the detail on there, it's, it's faded a little bit, but it does have a fillet on the inside and a couple of colours, so quite an elaborate um, little mounting. But we're going to give that back to them, so just pop that out of the way. And I'm just going to pop the frame down. I'll give it a quick blow with just a bit of dust and stuff from actually removing the, removing the frame. We're going to give this a clean again when we actually get into it, when we, when we do it. But I just want to get it off the table so that I can bring and show you where we are with uh, these pieces. So they've brought in some photographs that are going to go into the into this piece there's two photos and these have been pre-matted i think the photographer themselves has just used a plain box board uh, backing and this has a little bit of double-sided tape around it taking photographs apart can be a little bit tricky but in this case i can see that they've just used a very tiny we have a look up close uh, They've used a very tiny little piece of double-sided tape around the edge so this backing will actually come off and I can prise it apart and just get into this into this piece. Still got to be careful though, we don't want to uh, damage the actual photograph. I'm not too worried about the matting. The matting itself is dispensable but obviously we don't want to damage the photograph. And this is fairly typical of what you see um, some photographers doing and it's really not a great thing like if you're going to just put these into a picture frame it would cause problem and what they've done is they've sellotaped in the corners so there's a bit of clear standard everyday uh, sellotape four pieces of sellotape in the corner holding uh, that photograph to the back of the mat board and then they've obviously just given that to the client like that well this is not archival it's going to hurt the, the pictures themselves and we don't really want it on there so we're going to get rid of that i'm going to try to peel it off they don't it doesn't look too old which is one issue and if you if you are going to peel any tape off anything you do want to peel it away away from the image itself so this tape has actually picked up i don't know whether you can see it it's actually picked up a layer of the the back of this is a, uh, a matte paper that they've printed these photographs on so this is not particularly good I don't I don't really want to cut it off and leave the uh, leave the the tape on the back of the photograph because that that adhesive could cause kit damage over time so even though this is doing a little bit of um, damage to the back of this photograph it's not going to affect it uh, in the long term and really we're, we're looking at putting these then into this uh, this frame so yeah trying to get that without damaging it we do have spatulas and things that we use to get into them but this type of tape cellar tape is notorious for bonding one most tapes they bond and then glue the glue sets over time so what we've done is we've retrieved this photograph out of the mat so that's one of them and here you can see there's the double-sided tape running down they've just put double-sided tape top and bottom there was a couple of bits there but it's come off on the on the back end so that's going to go in the bin it's not going to be used again i'm assuming the other one is going to be done the same so just gently i'm going to i can see they've slid it in or you would think they they probably were going to slide it in but they've actually taped it together and then they've taped that with some just some six mil looks like a six mil hand applied quite aggressive double-sided tape onto the backing board so yeah again cellar tape on it if uh, when we're actually doing framing with uh, things you'll see the tape that we're going to use in a minute uh, one of the ones we particularly like, oh gosh, I've ripped the front of the box, but it doesn't matter, you can have a look, is Filmaplast P90. This is a German tape, pretty much the industry standard, uh, one of the industry standards for hinging digital artwork and photographs. In this case, this is the P90 Plus, but a bit of the tape's ripped off the box there, so you can't read the plus. Uh, in Australia, we find that the 
P90 Plus is a little bit better because it's a slightly more aggressive adhesive. Uh, there is a regular P90 uh, tape, which is still good. Uh, the industry uses it a lot, but what happens out temperature and humidity in Australia is a little bit different than that of Germany where the tape is from and so we find that that regular one tends to let go a little bit uh, uh, quicker than say uh, the, the P90 plus so I've got my two photographs we're just going to leave them on the table for a sec and I'm going to bring over what is our uh, map board we'll try and make a little bit of space so that we can we can get this for you guys so yeah I have my map board and in what they've done they've chosen two map boards we've cut these as separate items some people cut them together uh, this is just evenly positioned because it's going to fit inside the existing frame so we're having to work with the constraints of the old frame, but these mats have been cut so that the window will fit the size of the photograph when they, they go into the mat. So what's happening, we're gonna stick these two together, a little bit of double-sided tape. So on the back of the uh, outer mat, I'm just gonna run some, this is a double-sided tape on a, on a dispenser going to bond these boards together one thing if you are doing this you tend to have the uh, double sided tape quite close to the opening and the reason for that is is you don't want any buckling to happen between the boards so that's a backing board Let's leave that one out of there for a sec I'm going to align these just by having a look through the window some people stick their boards together when they cut them. We tend to stick together when we're actually doing the assembly process. So what I've got, basically my mat stuck together um, and we have our backing. The backing board and the mat board are gonna get hinged together. In this example, this is a five millimeter foam board. It's five mil in thickness. Some people use different thicknesses. Uh, this is an acid-free uh, an archival one. It's not a the art care board. It's there to help uh, protect the photographs from uh, becoming damaged through pollutants. This is just a scrap piece of 3mm. And the reason I've got that is I want to put this underneath here so that I can make these both the same level. And at this point, I'm going to put a hinging strip down the center to hinge these two boards together and I'm not going to use anything fancy here I'm using a uh, 25 mil uh, brown uh, backing tape on some archival type work you can use differing tapes here but this one is just a commercial uh, commercially available backing tape I'm trimming them off. So what I'm doing, making a hinge between the backing board and the matting. Now, where are we? Get a little, little burnisher. That's just so I can make this as a solid hinge here. And then the matting and the backing is going to hinge together. So we end up with something like that and that opens like a book. Now at this point, Photographs are going to get positioned and hinged and they're having the darker one on the bottom and the lighter one on the top. What we normally do is we put a little weight. These are a, a little uh, leather padded uh, weight that we have and uh, we usually will sit that on the photograph so it doesn't move around when we've got it in position. This is the same for doing one or multiple photographs. Um, sometimes photographs are glued down to the backing but in this case these are just going to be hinged because they're on quite a heavy weight uh, matte paper I'm just going to open and close the book in order to get the photograph in position again if this was a gloss photo I would put gloves on 
in this example we're not going to actually damage the photograph this guy here is quite close to the tip of the, his head's quite close to the top of the, the actual image a little bit tricky because we don't really want to take too much of his head off there but the photographer's cropped it really close so I just get them both in position but I will check them again before we actually put hinging hinging tape on so you can see I've positioned them inside the mat and then I'm just going to turn it so I can work easily on this on this piece so with the film with the filmoplast tape I'm going to make some little hinges now there are many different ways that people hinge uh, hinge pictures but what we're going to do we're going to make a little t-hinge from our our filmoplast tape and that involves uh, having uh, on something this size like a little piece that's maybe uh, 30 or 40 millimeters or a bit like an inch and a half or thereabouts long and that piece is going to stick underneath the photograph and it's going to face upwards we're going to put two pieces of that either side and we're going to put two separate pieces on which make the top of the letter T so that sticks that piece back down onto the backing board so as I say some people stick photographs down they glue them down this one with this type of paper we can get away with this hinging now on the I'm just going to pick this one up I removed the weight there you can have a look this photo is hinged this way I'm just going to burnish down a little bit of the tape on the back because this P90 tape is a uh, pressure sensitive tape so now that is hinged that photograph in position we're going to do that second one I'll just double check that we got him in position it's a little bit weird looking there we'll just shut this one again just checking that we got that one in position this one here you want to come reasonably close because he's quite we don't want his head to to stick under the mat board in, in any way there so once I'm happy with that another couple of pieces of tape same thing repeat the process on some uh, valuable artworks we use things like Japanese tissue for hinging but on digitals um, this pre pressure sensitive tape is quite good and the reason I'm actually sticking it to the backing is the backing will support the weight and that prevents the matting from buckling uh, as you'd noticed before they would stuck the photograph in four corners onto onto this old matting They'd actually put the cellar tape across the corners well what would have happened over time is this will move and it actually causes the photograph to buckle now that's due to expansion and contraction uh, and weather conditions and things like that so if you are going to hinge work normally you hinge it only on the top so that it's free to move and uh, it hangs down that way it supports the weight just going to burnish the back of those little ones a little bit so these are a bit of pressure sensitive tape so now we have our two photos in position simple to close our matting back and our pictures are in the mat boards now ready to go into the frame so this one's hinged this way and you can see the photos themselves are hinged the other way so they hang down so that's basically our mat ready to go now our, uh, our frame we're going to get that back up Now at this point I'm going to leave this old tape that's on the edge here it's pretty much firmly bonded you can see if I try to peel it off it doesn't want to come off and this one is a paper based uh, gum tape it's water based and we could always replace it with another piece of water based tape although we are probably going to use a self adhesive tape to seal it now in this case I can actually spray this with the glass cleaner um, in other circumstances if you're cleaning the outside of your frame and cleaning the outside of the glass you will probably want to uh, spray the cloth rather than the cleaner and they're just going to get in and give this a clean 
to make sure that we've got no dirt on that that glass on the inside. We are streaming live today from the Fixer Frame at Mount Cravat. So yeah, we've got phones going off, customers, all sorts of things happening. That's the wonder of uh, live broadcasts. You get to see what really happens in a frame shop. So this is one of our fitting benches. We have a, uh, a black uh, non-marking rubber on this bench. It's a 5 mil thick work surface. Underneath that there is actually some Pirelli uh, rubber uh, flooring. Now that goes back to our old shop where we, we had some spare uh, material and we thought well we'll cover the benches in it because it's non-slip and non-marking. So yeah we put this one on top just to add extra cushioning for delicate frames. So yeah, once you clean, make sure you clean all the corners. That is one area people tend to clean round and round, round and round. Whereas what you want to do is get in and clean all the right angles, right into the corners. Make sure there's no dirt there. Give it a good wipe. Now I'm going to use one of my air dusters just to, to blow any dust off there. I'll take the picture. No dust on there, but a little blow. And I'm just going to pop that straight into the frame. Now there are different tools people use. We're going to just use our standard uh, wide crown stapler. This one is something that's fairly common in the industry. It uses uh, an, an 80 staple and in this case this is 80 by 10 mil but we use different uh, heights of staple depending on what we're doing and we use varieties sta uh, stainless steel ones for when we uh, need something that's rustless so in this case we're going to put something like four or five staples on each side just to hold this into the frame Some people ask why we don't have a look at the front before we staple it. And usually, uh, if you pick it up to look on the face, you can uh, get dust into the frame. So it helps to pin it first, even if you do have to take out some staples later to, um, to get dust out. This is one way to make sure you, uh, you don't get dust in just from flipping the frame over. So we've stapled that all the way around. Flip it up and we're going to have a quick look at the face. Going to give it another quick clean. And this is where I would be spraying the cloth rather than the, than the, the glass itself. So just a microfiber one I've got here. A little bit onto the cloth. And the reason for that is I don't want any, the, any chemicals, like there can be a little bit of ammonia in some of the glass cleaners. And ammonia and the uh, slag metal or this gold leaf that is on this frame can affect the uh, finish they can corrode some of the finish so we don't want to have any discoloration from chemical within the glass cleaner and we also don't want glass cleaner to run down in this lip so normally when you're spraying you're cleaning your frames at home you want to make sure that you spray the cloth and then wipe the wipe the glass down rather than spraying onto the glass itself have it go down into the frame so we're just going to seal it up that's just a 40 mil or 48 mil brown gummed or brown uh, craft tape Now in this case, this actually sticks a little bit uh, up. The backing sticks out of the frame a little bit because only a shallow rebate. So we're going to make a couple of cuts. I cut the tape off, but there's a couple of places I'm going to cut it. A couple of little notches, and this is a this is a little trick. 
when we when we put it on I like to tuck that into the into the uh, edge where it sits up and smooth that top piece down but when you get to the end either using one of the the little um, utility knives or we often have the spare blades out of the util utility knives and we trim the a little notch just here so that we can tuck that piece down and then we trim the back of the tape off and we don't have to trim it right on the edge because you can actually damage the edge of the frame so cut uh, if you're going to cut that just come in about uh, two or three mil from the edge so that you can take that down and I use a little burnisher just to make sure that that tape is smooth this is a hard nylon block or polypropylene and it's a little device we use just for smoothing tape I'm gonna work all the way around now Gee, one thing I didn't check which I probably should have checked was the whether I was putting it back in the frame the same way up have a quick look yes something that uh, I just noticed because of these little holes here where the D-rings go and rather than having to reuse or put new D-rings on we're going to reuse the old rings they're quite stable in this example if they were worn if the wire was worn I should replace that we'll have a quick check of the, the wire on this one if there's any weakness we'll put new wire Just want to make sure when you're working that uh, you don't have any little uh, sharp bits or nasties on the actual bench itself because those things can scratch frames that's why we like this uh, rubber surface burnishing that down so that it's nice and secure some of these adhesive tapes are better than others uh, this one we like is a Rinrei tape from Japan um, but our other very big favorite of course is the traditional brown gummed craft tape um, it's the one that we run through water the difference there is the the brown craft has um, a water-based finish. Just show you what it's like. So, brown uh, craft tape. This side is uh, the sticky side, but it's not sticky at the moment because we haven't actually run it through water. So normally we would tear off lengths of that and run it through some a little bath of water, run the excess off, and then stick it onto the frame. That's a slightly old-fashioned way, but it shrinks as it dries and it holds the whole frame together. So it's still used uh, on quite a lot of our work. Uh, but in, the, in this example, we've gone to the adhesive version just because it's a little bit quicker. And I didn't want to have uh, another um, uh, little pot of water sitting here while I was working on this one. So once I've burnished it all the way around, I'm going to give it another quick look just to check there's no dust in the face. So we take a take a good look at it, make sure there's no marks there. Then normally I'd put some more bump-ons on, which are the little felt uh, uh, pieces, and these are designed to go into the corners to stop the frame from marking the wall. And it's not just from marking the wall, it actually promotes air circulation. So when you have the bump on in the corner, it allows the air to flow behind the, um, the piece itself. And that way you, uh, you don't have issues with uh, the picture frame going moldy, which, is, which can be a problem. Yeah, I'm just gonna put one of our labels. We normally have these ready to go. This one's not scored up, so I'm just gonna cut that label to size. Yeah, 
there. So we always put a label on the back. We have our little checklist on there. And our checklist is basically referencing the process that we use in our store. And that is to make sure that um, we've checked it for squareness. We've had a look at the damage, if there is any damage. Check the mes measurements in the glass. Squareness, confirm this matting. Check the sizing, check the backing. Confirm the glass type with clear glass already in there. Inspected it. Confirm the fitting types. Check the tolerances. Tolerances are how much play we've got in everything. And in this case, it's good. And we've clean inspected, uh, confirmed the fitting, and now we're checking the ceiling and we're going to check the hangers. And then we'll tick the last box when the customer comes just to make sure that they're happy with everything. So where we've got this one, I'm going to come back and use this wire again. I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at it. This is actually a, uh, it looks like a Zerlon uh, wire and these rings are really still quite secure. So not really any necessity to change this. Although with your picture frames, do check the wire from time to time because often the reason the picture falls down is the wire has corroded or the picture, uh, the, the hook falls out of the wall. Two of the common causes. So if your pictures are up at home, make sure that you're checking those things at least once a year, but sometimes a little bit quicker if you're, you know, if you're cleaning, uh, cleaning the glass on a frame, cleaning around the house, and every now and then you go around and clean your house, make sure you check the pictures, check the, the wire and the hooks. That way you don't have any disappointments and you keep them from having to be have any glass put in them at the picture framing shop. So yeah, I'm just gonna put these double D-rings back down into the frame. So these are very secure. This is cranked off at a slight angle, although they could be straight, it doesn't really matter. We're just matching the uh, the holes from the last time this job was done and you'll notice that the wire is quite slack on on the frame this is so that the uh, the force is reduced on the hanging point So yeah, just going to give that a bit of a tug, make sure that this is solid. We have our, our frame in, the, in with the glass, this has just clear glass, so you can see the reflection there. And then once I've got it all clean and I'm happy that it looks great, we like to wrap it up. Um, we just have a, uh, a brown craft uh, backing paper. Some people back the picture frames with this, but we just use it for packaging most of the time. And it just keeps everything clean, waiting for people to pick it up. Plus it's like uh, getting a Christmas present when you come in to pick your pictures up and there's a, uh, a, nice, uh, a nicely wrapped picture there. You get the excitement of uh, Christmas or your birthday all again when you unlock the picture frame. So this one folds right over. Just tuck it in, we'll get our, our taping roll. I will also wrap up the old, uh, the old picture. Um, yeah, there's many times where we've changed numerous pictures over for uh, other ones when uh, relationships change and you've got a beautiful frame left over from say a wedding and uh, you don't want to get rid of the frame even though you might have got rid of the partner so um, you can repurpose uh, old frames quite successfully and uh, and then the last thing that we do on that one is we pop uh, customer's name and job number on there and we put that away safely uh, until they come in and pick it up. So that was just a quick look. Uh, that was just a quick look at how we uh, repurpose. Uh, uh, it was actually an old wedding photo frame, and now the kids are grown up. Uh, 
customer wants to put those two photos of the kids into a frame without having to go to the expense of say getting a new frame but they also like that particular style so they got a, a great gold frame and we just repurposed it by adding some matte board in there that was cut with two windows so if you need something like that you can always visit us at fix a frame at mount cravat if you want to learn how to do picture framing we've got a, a great thing which is on at pictureframeclass.com where you can get a, a basic framing class or there's actually a link in this video uh, at the bottom to where you can grab that class for free that's a small bonus when you just a digital download or if you want to get physical dvds there's an option there to get those too but you can have the, the digital copies for free so check that out and uh, also we have something called the framers club which is for picture framers that want to take their framing to the next level where we have a huge archive of uh, complex picture framing so i've been testing our live streaming today on facebook and youtube so i'm glad you got something out of this please type your comments in the uh, in the chat or in the comments below and i'll try to come and answer those for you so i'm going to just end the stream here but we'll see you next time uh, at fix a frame thanks for coming